Half-Life Alex Modders. This week I'm going to continue to explore some Lua stuff. Specifically, I was thinking about how I could modify NPC citizen behaviors using think functions. I've covered think functions in the past for other things, especially with barnacles, and I'll link a video here on think functions in general. But here what I want to do is I'm going to take a generic actor and drop it into the scene. And then that generic actor, I'm going to change its model, and I'm going to get the model out of here, to be a citizen NPC. Let's choose not the vault one, but the regular one. Here it is, citizens male VMDL, accept. So there we go, he turns into that. And now I'm going to set his preview animation to idle. There. There's my citizen. I'm going to take a script that Valve actually provides. Valve has a generic actor tutorial. They have a script that makes a generic actor follow the player around. And I'll go over a bit of the script and then I'll show you some modifications I made to try and make an NPC circle a player. Now this one is pretty well documented right out of the box. It starts with a spawn function. So that is going to set the think function that we're going to use to main think func. If I go right down here, you can read the rest of these comments, but the important bit I want to look at right here is this main think func function. It's going to grab a handle to the local player, make sure a local player exists. It's going to set this entity, so whatever entity the script is associated with, in this case is going to be the generic actor, it's going to set them to look at the local player's eye position. So if that's supported in the NPC, then as they move around, they're going to try and look your player in the eyes. It tries to find the distance to the current player. And if this entity is close to the player, it's going to clear the nav goal. If it's further from the player, then it's going to try and find the quickest path to the player. Um, so here, if it has no activity goal, it's going to create a path to the player. If the distance is further than a certain amount, and we haven't updated the path for a while, then we're going to create a path to the player. And this is going to run every 0.1 seconds. So every 0.1 seconds, whatever NPC this is, is going to run its think function. So this is a nice way to put some sort of logic inside your NPCs, which updates every 0.1 seconds or however frequently you want. Now, if you go down into this create path to player, it does a little vector math here to figure out where the NPC should be headed to try and get closer to the player. And then it says NPC force go to position. So that forces the NPC to go to some goal. And here it says whether it should run and the FL goal tolerance, which I think is, you know, how close you actually have to be able to get to your goal to have that goal satisfied. There's also a variable here which sets the time to the last time it was updated which is used up here to check if we should update the player's goal based on time, not just based on distance. Now this follow player Lua is really well documented. I encourage you to grab a copy of it. If you can't get a copy of it, let me know and I'll pass you this copy and go over it and make sure you can understand what's going on here. Now, if I want to apply that script to any generic actor, I can go into the generic actor. I'm going to go to miscellaneous entity scripts and I'm just going to put the name of the script. And now if I compile this map and run it, this generic actor, which is using this particular model, will run that script and try to follow the player around. So there's the NPC. You can see if I get to a certain distance from him, he's going to update his path and he's going to try and approach me. And you can use this on pretty much any model. So this could be a head crab. Here I happen to be using a citizen, but any model using a generic actor can follow that script as long as our animation graph knows how to move in certain directions, which should be default on most animation graphs. Okay, so that's the easy part. Now let's look at modifying this so that he'll circle the player. Here we are in a modified version of the fall player script, which instead of following the player is going to try and make a circle around the player. Let's go down to the main think function. I've added some comments here, so if you want to copy the script, let me know, and I'll share it out to you. 
but here I have this float circle degrees and float circle degrees is just going to go between 0 and 360. Every time the think function is called, I'm going to update the degrees by a certain amount. The amount you update the degrees by should sort of correspond with how often you call it. So if you call it frequently, you want to make smaller updates to where you're going to go in the circle. If you update infrequently, then you make bigger changes. So here I'm changing it by 10 degrees. As soon as I get over 360, I just reset to zero because it's only 360 degrees in a circle and that's how I'm going to make sure that I keep on circling. Technically, I don't have to do this. You could keep on growing the number and the math will work itself out, but I just want to make sure that I stay within zero and 360. Next, I get a handle to the local player. I check if the local player is null because if it's null, then there's not much I can do. I just have to kind of panic. We set the NPC to look at the player, if that's available, if they have some way to look at the player, like swoop in their head or something. And that has to be in the animation graph. Now, if the entity does not already have a path, I'm gonna tell it to circle the player. And I'll look at this function in a bit, but circle the player is basically the way or the math it uses to pick the next point on a circle. Otherwise, I check when was the last time that I updated the path? And if it's been a while since I've given them a path point in the circle, I just give the NPC another path point. So this is really, really simple behavior. And I'm gonna do this every 0.8 seconds. So instead of where follow player does this every 0.1 seconds, I'm actually gonna delay this a little bit and that's to try and smooth out the animation to give the NPC a chance to take a few steps before it calculates a new path to update. Now down here in circle player, I get a handle to local player. This here is the size of the circle I'm going to use to walk around the player. So the radius of the circle, which is basically the center of the circle out to the edge. And here I'm gonna use 150. You can use pretty much anything here if you don't get too close to the player. So I found 150 is a pretty good distance. Now this is just a bunch of trigonometry, math stuff that I found online. If you sat down, you could convince yourself this works. Personally, what I did was made a spreadsheet with some reasonable values, which calculated out the update to a circle at each spot and used simple values with an x, y of, so here an x of four and a y of four, a radius of the circle is two, and each time I calculated well, if the player is at four, four, this point on the circle is five, 0.7, so 5x, 5.7y. Here it's 4x and 6y. Here it's 2x and 4. And then I could plot that on graph paper and just see if the, the formula sort of made sense. So it's a matter of not just blindly using the math. I sort of wanted to convince myself that the math worked. And in this case, after going over this spreadsheet, I found that I could draw out the circle that this math would make, which was kind of handy. So you can gloss over the math if you want, but I encourage you to sit down and just kind of work through it a bit because there's a lot of vector math that goes on in setting path points. Here it's grab the angle by taking the FL degrees, so that's zero to 360, and then convert into radians. Those radians are used in a math.cos, uh, the cosine function and the sine function to figure out where the next X and Y should be. So based on the player's X and Y, which is the center of the circle, I can calculate this X and Y. Then I set a goal position. This goal position is going to be the next point on that circle. And then I tell the NPC to walk towards that point and update the last time that I updated his path. Very happy to give this script so you don't have to rewrite it. I was kind of hoping to find this sort of functionality built into Valve's functions, but I couldn't find anything that does quite this. Now I can take my MBC, I can change the function that it's using to move, or to think, I should say, as player follow 2lua And now if I run this, we should have him walking around the player in a circle. Now I just jumped in, but the MBC is already trying to get around me or, or make a path around me, so I'm gonna move. And we'll watch the NPC approaches the player. And what he's really approaching is the next point on that circle. So I can watch him 
calculating the circle around me. So he keeps on moving to the next point in the circle, next point in the circle, next point in the circle. Now, if I move away from the NBC, he's going to calculate the next point, but it's going to be closer to me because my the radius, the distance between us changes. So if I move back, the NBC realizes that he is not on the right circle anymore and plots the next point on the circle. And so this is where that 0 to 360 comes in. It's going to keep on going around me, and when he resets the start, it resets to 0 and counts up to 360 again. So it's a nice little behavior you can make your NPCs do. And you can combine this with the follow behavior. It sort of already follows. You can decide if an NPC is a certain distance from a player, then maybe you trigger the follow versus the create a circle. And this originally came from a question from one of my subscribers asking if I could get some sort of behavior like a, a dinosaur that circles a player in a threatening manner. Now what I'll do quickly now is I'm going to show you how you can take that same script and apply it to a different hull. Now a handy thing you can do is once you have described the behavior you want in a Lua script, you can use that script and apply it to different hulls. So here instead of a citizen, I'm going to switch this out for an armored head crab. Actually just a regular head crab. I always use armored. Let's use a regular one. Uh, head crab, head crab, head crab. There's a head crab classic. Accept. Now as long as this model has an animation graph that understands path following, I can use it with that script. So this is the model I'm using, this is the script I'm using. Let's compile it and see what happens. All right, there's my friend Headcrab. He's trying to work out where the next point on the circle is. You see he did like kind of a little roundabout thing or a little mistake there. Now he's gotten his point, so he's moving around. If I move over here, He's going to try and come to the circle, and then he's going to start going around. And look how smooth this animation is. This animation is a lot smoother than the NBC. The NBC stumbled sometimes. It's almost like an animation wasn't finished before the next one started. But this hull works really nicely. It just moves smoothly around the circle. So if I move back again, he's going to realize that he's off the circle and come back to that circle and start pathing around again. Oh, this time, the the point on the circle he calculated was already past me, so he's going to go over there first and then start a circle. And you can adjust that. You could make it so that the next path, or the next point on the path is the closest one if you want. There's all kinds of things you can do in Lua to modify this behavior. So this is a very simple behavior, but the sky's the limit. You could do all kinds of stuff. You could have a whole, you know, if-then-else tree to decide is it going to circle you, is it going to attack you, throw some random variables in there so maybe sometimes it attacks, sometimes it circles. I mean there's just tons of stuff you can do with Lua to try and build a little bit of AI into these NPCs. And you can make sure that you're leveraging some of the existing AI. So imagine using Lua scripts on an NPC that has good AI and just modifying its behaviors a bit. Oh, here's a little circle game where it got stuck and now he's going to come around this circle here. So I hope that's helpful. If you want any of these scripts, just let me know in the comments below. And uh, go experiment. Have fun. Use some Lua and try to figure out different things you can do with the NPC behaviors. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your Half-Life Alex mods.